Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You're all cranky because it's hot. My name is Bill Wordy. Uh, for those of you that know me, um, I was the editor at Billboard for uh, about five or six years. And then about a year ago, I left, a year and a half ago, I left. And now uh, I run a small agency. It's not so small, 70 people uh, in four different cities in America. I run an agency called Fenton that is looking, or has for 33 years, uh, tackled progressive cause. We work with activist groups and community groups and foundations. Uh, so that's, it's a whole different world and I'm very happy to be back here and uh, seeing old friends from the music space. Uh, if you're interested in knowing more or if you uh, in music would like to create some good in the world, you can check out Fenton.com, uh, F-E-N-T-O-N.com and learn a little bit more about uh, my company. But we're here today to talk about Meetem. Um, this is the music business, so I've joked, I think that uh, for 48 years, people would come to meet them and they would complain because it was cold and rainy. And now because we are the music business, we'll just complain because it's hot. You're laughing because it's true. <laughs> the theme of meet them uh, this year is convergence. And I think... Um, we see convergence in a lot of ways. In my new world, I see convergence all the time, right? The, the agency world and the communications world and the content world, everything is one world now in the digital space. Everyone wants to create the content, everyone wants to distribute the content. It's ripping apart industries and redefining them. I think the same is true as I well know, as you well know in the music space. Once upon a time, it was very clear uh, what an agent did, what a marketer did, what a, a label did, what a publisher did. And these days, uh, it's obviously far less clear. And I think one of the things we'll see over the next uh, few days, hopefully, is uh, some real cutting edge intelligence from some of the folks that are truly on the front lines of the music industry about how this world is changing. Obviously, a focus on technology. But convergence plays out in a lot of ways. Like here at Medium, we have the convergence of very, very many pale and socially unacceptable people with very many tan uh, and beautiful people. Sometimes convergence feels like this. I had this great image in my head of all of these pale indie people showing up at Meetem in this bright sun and cowering somewhere. But it seems like everyone's adjusting well. And of course, this is a road to next year's enormous 50th Meetem, which is pretty exciting. I'm gonna step off the stage You'll see me throughout the day, throughout the next few days. I am the, uh, the MC, the hostess with the mostess over the next three or four days. Um, I welcome your questions, your comments, your feedback throughout the day. And with that, I'm going to bring uh, Marie Cellier, who is the director of corporate and uh, public affairs and intellectual property at Vivendi uh, for a brief presentation. So welcome again to Meetem. I thank you, Meetem thanks you. And uh, I think you're in for a really fantastic few days. Thank you, MC Bill. Um, good, morning, good afternoon, everybody. It's good to be back here with the Media Shaker this year again. We're going to go through a presentation that we built with Equimetrics, our strategy consulting partner. I'll go through a couple of key trends in just five minutes, so very quickly. You are all, I'm sure, very smart about all these topics, but you will be able to find all the slides and details again on uh, the website, themediashaker.com, and on Twitter. Let's go backwards in the industry evolution timeline from a usage and technology perspective. Some of us have described the pre-internet era as a golden age for the industry, and truly, it was a blooming time for innovation on hardware, on physical format, from radio to vinyls, from cassettes to CDs. This golden age was organized around linear distribution channels for manufactured product. The typical music consumer would buy an album and pay for each purchased unit. The real shift from product to service happened around year 2000. Not only Napster and Pandora appeared, but it was a real turning point in the rise of connectivity. Remember that in 1995, only 0.6% of the world population 
had access to the internet. Now it's almost 40%. This key factor has strongly facilitated illegal downloading. At the same time, connectivity has enabled the emergence of many, many legal services such as iTunes and later on uh, the social media applications. So in a very short period of time, in less than 15 years, a big wave of innovation has surrounded music users. Availability and access have become major value attributes of this service innovation world whereas acquisitiveness has gradually been losing ground. Time also became a new parameter. On the one hand, virality and speed play a major role, and on the other hand, time has stretched as songs and playlists are streamed on a longer period of time. Today's consumers are looking for more than just a song. They are looking for an entertainment experience, which means a way to enjoy music in the right format, in the right context. Now, what does this shift from product to service mean for industry players? In terms of value proposition, the new service innovation era means to be able to, to provide more personalized offers. Let's take a few examples that would illustrate this strategic uh, positioning. It's not an exhaustive chart, it's just a big picture. For the players that were founded before the internet era, between the 30s and the 50s, the roots are in the production side. Since then, they have been progressively adding new businesses to have more than one string to their bow. Then came the pure online players, the Netflixes in the video, and the Spotify's, and the Jesus, and many others. They build their success by leveraging a direct consumer relationship, uh, which enabled them to build very powerful consumer brands. Apple started as a hardware company and then built a very strong service-oriented ecosystem. Amazon invented a way to reorganize the supply chain to increase the availability of products purchased through the internet and home delivered. Logically, they anchored their business in the distribution side. Google started as a search engine. They captured a major position on, ad on the advertising space and, and then developed a wide range of services to the user. <coughs> Having said that, this complex ecosystem remains unstable and even sometimes chaotic. There is now a multiplicity of service business models, also because innovation cycles are very short. As a conclusion, I would like to bring two key stakes for the industry to succeed in the service innovation era. The first one is to develop personalization. The second one is to manage the user relationship. So tomorrow, we'll explore the music uh, user online journey so with the Echimetrics, but from a generation's perspective, from boomers to digital natives. Thank you for your attention, and we hope to see you tomorrow. So uh, next on stage, I'm going to bring out uh, Hans Holger Albrecht the CEO of Deezer. Uh, he'll be interviewed today in the first visionary talk you're having at Meet Him by Mark Sutherland, who's a contributing editor at Music Week. Thank you. <laughs>